Hello, future Boilermakers, and welcome to our live Q&A broadcast about five majors in the Department of Computer and Information Technology here at Purdue University. To all of the students watching who have been admitted to Purdue, congratulations, and a very warm welcome to all of you. My name is Tony Munguia, and I'm the Director of Recruitment, Retention, and Diversity in the Polytechnic. The professors, staff, and students who are with me this evening hope to give you some insight and information about our Department of Computer and Information Technology, which we will refer to as CNIT. Uh, and, and we're going to keep using CNIT for the rest of the, of the night. Uh, you can submit questions via the YouTube chat window by signing into your Google account and typing them in. And Jessica Hoya. Angie Murphy and our technical director, John O'Malley, will be monitoring the chat and we will do our best to answer your questions. If we don't get to your question tonight, please feel free to follow up um, with the at follow up to at techrecruit at purdue.edu and we will respond later. Now, before we get started with today's discussion or tonight's discussion, I'd like to ask each of our panelists to introduce themselves. Let's start with the professors who are here tonight. So would you please tell us your name and a little bit about the courses you teach? Hello, Don, let's start with you. Hi, uh, my name's Don Laux. Um, I'm a clinical associate professor and associate department head in CIT. Um, right now I'm teaching a course on information governance, and I have been with the department since 2007. Thank you. Uh, Paul, you're next. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, everyone. My name is Paul Thomas. I'm a clinical assistant professor in the Department of Computer and Information Technology. I teach courses in systems analysis and design, IT project management, and a little bit of cybersecurity. I also teach in the online graduate programs for IT project management and business analysis. Thank you, Paul. Hello, Phil. You're hey, next. Tony. I am Phil Rawls. I'm associate head for undergraduate studies here in CIT. I have been here since 1996. Uh, Dawn always gives me that look. And I teach in the network security and network engineering space. Thank you. Hi there, Romola. Romola, you're next. Hi, my name is Romila Pradhan, and I'm an assistant professor in computer and information technology. I have been with the department uh, since 2021, so pretty fresh there. And I teach courses in databases and data management. I teach enterprise data management, another course in database administration, and a graduate course on responsible data management. Thank you. Okay, we are also very glad to have an academic advisor with us this evening. Hi, Melody. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, Tony. Hi, future Boilermakers. I'm Melody Carducci, and I'm an academic advisor in CIT. I've been in that role for four years, and I'm looking forward to meeting all of you very soon. Thank you. Well, we really like having current students with us uh, to speak about why they chose Purdue. Would you all please tell us your name, where you're from, and why you chose your, uh, your major, and why you picked Purdue for that major? And we'll start with Kat. Hi everybody, my name is Kat Morales. I am a junior here at the Polytechnic Institute studying CIT. Um, I'm from New Jersey, closer to New York City, and I chose CIT and Polytechnic in general because I love the community over here and how inviting they were as soon as I stepped foot on campus, especially Tony, she guided me through campus all the way back in 2020. And also I love how flexible the program is so I can explore all these different avenues that I want to pursue. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Phoenix, you're next. Hi there, everybody. Uh, my name is Phoenix Dimekiba. I'm currently a junior with a double major in cybersecurity and network engineering technology. Um, I'm actually from San Diego, California, so not quite local. Um, but one of the reasons why I came to Purdue is that I was a five year participant in what's called the Cyber Patriot program. Uh, this is a high, like middle school, high school based um, cybersecurity academic competition that I had a really good experience with. Um, and that made me want to continue with cybersecurity and my college studies. Um, Purdue has a really great program. You know, a lot of the you know, courses look really interesting. 
Um, and the admissions presentations really made it feel like um, I was more than just a number. Uh, so really glad to be here. Thank you, Phoenix. And hello to you, Evan. Hello. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Evan. I am a senior in computer and information technology. I also have minors in theater design and production and business management and a certificate in lighting design. So pretty busy. I'm from Crown Point, Indiana. Uh, and so that's about an hour and 20 minutes away from campus. So not too far. And I chose uh, computer and information technology because I have a lot of passions in different industries, but I kind of found the underlying thing that brought it all together was the technology I was using to take people's ideas and bring them to life. And so CIT and the Polytechnic give me a lot of hands-on experience, uh, building systems from the ground up, maintaining old systems, or um, even being a part of that business side where you're project planning and managing those projects. And so it's been a great four years. Thank you, Evan. And thank you everyone for being here this evening. Now, just to remind all of the future students who are watching, we often refer to the department, like I mentioned earlier, by its nickname, which is CIT. One of the four majors within the department actually has the same name. When we are talking about CIT, most of the time we will probably be referring to the whole department and all its majors, but we will do our best to be clear. The department actually offers five majors. First, computer and information technology. That's the CIT major within the CIT department. Second is cybersecurity. The third is called computer infra computing infrastructure and networking and network engineering technology. The first Fourth major is data analytics, technologies, and applications. And the fifth major is called systems analysis and design. Okay, let's dive right into our questions and our discussions today. Um, the first question goes to Phil. And it's the one that it's the one question we hear most frequently. Would you please describe how the programs in our Department of Computer and Information Technology are similar to other computing? related majors on campus, and then what is different about our CIT majors? Sure, I'd be happy to. When you look at computing in general, it runs a very wide gamut, and computing really began with the folks over in electrical and computer engineering. They're the ones who created the first transistors and integrated circuits and, and literally built the hardware. And once that happened, you started coming up with software. Computer science is all about software. And the work that they do is much closer to the hardware. They do a lot of stuff with operating systems, a lot of theoretical piece. When you talk about networking, they're talking about writing TCP IP stacks, those kind of things. So all software all the time. Whereas what we do here in computer and information technology is we take all the really cool toys the engineers and the computer scientists have created and we bring those together and we work with people to solve real world problems. So we will go out and say, you need to build a network to do this. We'll take routers and switches. We'll plug them together. We'll configure them so that we can actually put those things there and make it happen. Whereas computer science might be writing new database management systems or new web servers, we'll be writing an application for e-commerce that uses that web server and that database management system to solve that problem as it exists. So if you're thinking that uh, CIT is going to be all about sitting in the corner, drinking Mountain Dew and hiding from people, that's very untrue. We are a very people oriented business. We deal with a lot of folks because we have to be able to understand what their needs are. We have to be able to speak to them at a place where they are. They're not going to be computing experts, so we need to know their business and work with them. And so we take all those things together and build problems, but pardon me, build solutions to problems, which is really a lot of fun. Thank you, Phil. Don, you have the second question. One of our hallmarks, the hallmarks of our college here at Purdue, the Polytechnic Institute, is that our students get to do a lot of learning by doing. What does what does hands on learning mean within CNIT? Uh, could you tell us about things like lectures, labs, as well as group projects? Um, so in our uh, department and in the polytechnic in general, 
uh, we are very um, active learning driven. Uh, we have a lot of courses that also include labs. Um, the students will probably uh, expand on that later as well. But um, we, we try to get away from the idea that you're going to come into class and you're going to set still and take notes for, uh, you know, 50 minutes. Um, we try to break the time up um, when we're when we're in the classroom, we try to break it up with different active learning techniques. You might have discussions with the people around you. Um, you might work on small group activities that um, that in most classes you might you might listen to us talk for 10 minutes. We'll do something and then we'll talk another 10 minutes. Um, we might set up something that you do individually or you might do it in, in a group. You might have a discussion. Um, so that's during the lecture. We try to keep it interactive. Uh, then you, if you have a course that has a lab, then you would take those things that you discussed in the lecture and you would put it to practice in the lab. Some of the labs are individual, some are group, um, but it's meant to give you a hands-on experience and to really um, experience the things that we're talking about in class. And um, I, I was asking my son today because he's a freshman at, here at Purdue. And I said, what's different? What's different from being in high school versus college? And he said that the, the thing that he's noticed is that you're not in class as much um, and you have some freedom that you're in class because you wanna be there. You're not, as he put it, stuck. <laughs> stuck there like you are in high school. Um, he's like, you want to be there. And the the topics are condensed and fast paced, but they're they're interesting and they're fun. And um and, and generally just said it it's it's a it's a more enriching experience. So there you go from a freshman at Purdue. <laughs> Thank you, Don, and thank you for that example. Well, we have a couple of questions from the audience, so I'm going to go to those, and then I'll come back to specific questions to each of our members. Um, which learning community should women in CIT apply to in the dorms? And I know the answer to that, but I, I don't know, Kat, were you part of, of WIT learning community or any other learning community? Unfortunately, I was not. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, I was not. Okay, I don't think CNIT has its own learning community. Is that correct? Okay. Did anybody want to share that? Okay, because I would recommend then the Women in Technology Learning Community that it has a, a class Tech 101 associated with it. And the residence hall for that learning community is Meredith South, which is a brand new state of the art learning community. It's maybe, I think, a year and a half. Uh, old and uh, you would be in that learning community with other women, but usually are paired up with another member, uh, another student that is in the same major or in the same department like CNIT. And, um, and we have the class, which meets usually on Friday. We have lots of different um, uh, fac uh, alumni that come back and kind of share their story, other female alumni. And then there's all sorts of activities throughout the semester. Can I add something? Sure. Okay. Um, one of the activities that Tony has uh, each student do um, from the course is to come and interview uh, faculty, uh, female faculty in CIT. I really enjoy those interactions, um, and it's a way for me to get to know those of the stu those students that are in the learning community. And then when I have them in class, it's always fun because they'll come up and say, oh, remember me? I, I met with you like the, the first week of classes. So um, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's another way that you as a student can interact with the faculty your very first semester of college. Yeah, and then it's, it's, it's easy, but like you said, it's comfortable. They're comfortable with you afterwards, yeah. 
Thanks, um, Don, for that as well. We have another uh, question by Edgar. And I'm sorry, Edgar, I might mess up your, your last name, Babajanian. Um, and he says, uh, I was curious if I could minor in CS while majoring in uh, engineering technology, or I'm, I'm assuming CNIT programs at Polytechnic. Furthermore, is it possible to double major and minor? And I'm assuming that's probably our advisor and maybe some of the faculty can answer that one. Yeah, so some, it's always possible. How much time and money you wanna spend to do those things is up to you, but it's always possible. Um, our general CIT majors are required to have a non-computing minor. So if you were in general CIT, um, we would expect you to major or minor in something that was not computer related. So that would that would decline the computer science. Um, many of our students who are in cybersecurity or uh, networking or data will attempt the CS minor. Um, CS is very full, so it's oftentimes hard to get the space that you need in those classes, but you are welcome to pursue the minor um, in those in any of our majors if you would choose. Just know that if you're in the general major where a minor is required, a CS minor will not meet that um, requirement. So you would have to minor in CS as well as a non-computing minor. As for the dual major, um, we've not had very many students successfully attempt that, and that probably would require at least an extra year. So instead of four years, you would lo be looking at five years to accomplish that. So um, possible, yes, but again, how much time do you want to devote to do that? That's that's your decision. Okay, thank you, Melody. Uh, another. I'd like to chip in yeah. on that for a second sure. Tony, if you don't no, mind. Um, Mel Melody hit on a couple of things. First of all, uh, earlier Tony had mentioned that we have CNIT major as well as the department. We usually refer to the CNIT major as the general major because in CIT. What that major does is it gives you all of your upper division courses as electives. So if you have an interest in something we don't have a specific major in, you can choose which of our upper division courses you want to take so that you can tailor your education to what your interests are. And one of the key parts of that major is that we want you to do a minor in something to which you can apply your IT education. So the only caveat we put on that is the one Melody mentioned of it needs to be in something other than computing. You're already majoring in computing. We want you to minor in something else. So this is an awesome opportunity if you have a couple of interests. You love computers, you want to be in computing, but you also like business. Oh, but I, I I like philosophy. I'm I'm I love religion. I love all these different things. There is nothing in this world where computing isn't a part of it. So this is a great opportunity for you to major in computing minor in something else that's important to you, scratch that itch, and then you can position yourself to work in that industry as an IT professional. Thank you, Phil. Um, JD, also from the audience, says, what types of specifications for a laptop would a cybersecurity major fit best? Um, a, a more high-end rig or would a budget laptop work just as well? And and whoever wants to answer this, please talk about the computer recommendations, probably for all the majors. I'll, I'll take that one as well because I wrote that document. Okay. Um, so <laughs> if you if you look at what's what's best, I would say for a college student in general, the the key items that you're going to look for are weight and battery life. At the end of the day, uh, that cool looking portable gaming machine, right? is wonderful till you start carrying around eight pounds for 10 hours a day and plugging it in every two hours because the battery's dead. Um, so instead, something that meets the Ultrabook specification 
uh, you should be able to find something that's good for eight hours uh, a day with with minimal problem. 16 gig of RAM, do not get less than that anymore. The memory soldered onto the motherboards. It's harder to, to add those in at least uh, half a terabyte of disk space. I would go for uh, a full terabyte uh, would be the, the key items. Um, bigger processor, never bad. But most things today, are, we're not running short on processing power. That's usually not the, the concern. Um, a display that's going to be nice to look at and watch. I, I'm kind of fond of 4K displays, but you do give up a little battery life to drive that many pixels. So there's a, a little balance you have to put in between those things are kind of the, the important aspects. Uh, other things to note when, when setting that up, especially if you're looking for graduation gift ideas or whatnot, things not to get. Don't spend money buying Microsoft Office or other pieces of software. You can get those for free or for five bucks once you're here at Purdue. So, right, don't don't invest your money there. You'll be able to do those. Inkjet printers are like lighting $50 bills on fire. Uh, you'll, you'll have access to all sorts of printers when you get here, color printers in the labs. And if you want to have your own printer for drafts or whatnot, Get one of the little brother black and white lasers for 70 bucks. It's going to cost you pennies on the dollar compared to an inkjet to print pages. So that's going to go a long way toward where you want to be. And then you're also going to want to make sure that you come with a good handful of USB storage sticks. Uh, our students can talk to that, but you're always sharing information, putting different pieces and parts on there. So if you're looking for little things there or, or uh, uh, at Places where they're giving those away is trinkets. You can never have too many of those about. And, and if you find one laying about, don't shove it into your computer. Our cybersecurity students can explain that uh, in a heartbeat as well. So those are the key items to look at from a computing perspective. Oh, I would also add um, anything you buy that's Ultrabook is going to cover uh, your Wi-Fi. That's going to be built in. You don't need to worry about cellular modems. Campus has very good coverage everywhere on Wi-Fi, and there's absolutely no reason to have any kind of dial-up mode at this point in time. Thank you. Bill, can, can you address Max versus non-Max? Sure, I'd be happy to do so. Uh, that conversation has gotten a little more difficult uh, lately. Back when Apple was running Intel processors and you could run Windows or you could run Mac OS or Linux or anything directly on that hardware, that was a really simple solution. If you wanted a Mac, get a Mac. Great, no problem. A lot of the software you're going to need to run for your classes is going to be Windows-based. So if you get a Mac, you're going to have to emulate that. Um, emulation is getting better, so it's not a showstopper by any means. But if you're in cybersecurity or networking, uh, one of the uh, benefits you're going to get here is you're going to get free access to a lot of VMware software so you can run different uh, operating systems as virtual machines on top of yours. And for that, you're going to need Intel-based hardware. It's not going to work on the, the Mac 1 and 2-based um, hardware. It's wonderful, wonderful machines, but it's just not going to be a really great fit for our particular application. Okay, thank you, Phil. Paul, let's um, let's go back to our, our professors and our students. Would you please uh, give us some examples of specific programming languages that students learn to use or specific course topics related to coding? Absolutely. But before I answer that, I want to piggyback off something Phil said in response to the first question in that the goal of our programs is to develop or provide students the opportunity to develop and grow skills so they can function in any part of the IT organization. With that said, programming, software development, that is an integral part of IT. So as such, we don't slack in that regard. We do offer courses that cover Python, C, and Java. And I believe all students, it is mandatory that they will end up taking those three languages at the very least, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, I am right. And um, and a lot of our secure coding curriculum builds off of that if you are going to be majoring cybersecurity or if you're going on the general track and have an interest in that. Now, um, I, I tend to encounter two types of students, one who are all into programming, want to do that and that alone, 
And the other is it's like, I tolerate this, can I not do it? And it comes back to what Phil said in that, even if you don't necessarily want to be a software developer, it will be beneficial for you to understand how programs are written, what are good uh, software development practices that you can implement in your uh, workplaces or future careers. And uh, to that end, we offer what we feel is sufficient depth to uh, set our students up for success in that regard. And we do have a number of alumni who function in the capacity of a software developer in numerous organizations as well. Thank you, Paul. Romila, um, one of the newest majors in the CNIT department is data analytics, technologies, and applications. How do you describe mm -hmm. the major to people who aren't familiar with it? Yeah, great question, Tony. So, yeah, so data is increasingly becoming a key aspect uh, of our lives, and so many of our everyday decisions are made based on data. So, movie and product recommendations, natural language uh, assistance such as uh, Alexa, Siri, Google Home, and so on. We have all been using them, right? So, this new major, data analytics, technologies, and applications, which also abbreviates to data data. Uh, that equips our students with the necessary knowledge uh, and background in all aspects of a data-based education. And we offer courses uh, ranging from databases and data management that support data collection and data processing, uh, data management um, and data storage to foundational courses in, statistical, in statistics and machine learning, where students get to apply all of these uh, analytics and techniques to solve real-world problems. So now with this, with the skills that they gain through this Students are pretty well positioned to uh, get into jobs in the industry, such as data scientists, data engineers, data architects, uh, anything that has the, the keyword data, and it is pretty hot nowadays. So yeah, that's there. And then there's, there's also the option of pursuing a higher education. So yeah, everything that has to do with data, we do have that in the data major here. Well, thank you. Very good. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a follow up to Paul for cybersecurity. Should we learn a programming language before coming to class? And if so, which language should we learn or get familiar with? I'm not going to specify which language you should or shouldn't learn, but. Having um, existing knowledge of programming coming into a computer and information technology program will not hurt you in any way. Um, if anything, it might give you a different perspective or even better understanding of some of the things we're going to talk about in our various classes. Um, and the other thing, too, is if you're pursuing the cybersecurity major, you are inevitably going to end up taking secure coding classes, which again builds off programming languages. So uh, the general answer for, uh, I give for this is that. Um, Think less about the programming language, but problem solving approaches. If you know how to solve a, pro a problem, you can learn the syntax to do that in any language. Now, granted, some things are easier to do in language A versus language B. Some things are easier to do in Python versus uh, C or C++, for sure. But I would recommend focusing on the actual problem solving because what is in vogue today with regard to programming languages will be forgotten tomorrow. By tomorrow, I mean not necessarily exactly tomorrow, but five, 10 years down the line. Um, Phil can probably uh, add some context to this, but you know, 50 years ago, COBOL was all the rage. Everyone graduating from any kind of computing program was learning COBOL. Nowadays, we don't teach it as much. And I think we may have retired some courses in that regard too, Phil, if you want to chime in. Yep, so. Absolutely. <laughs> um, if, if you look at, at kind of the thrust of the first question was, what language should you learn and do you need to learn a language? There is no expectation that you know how to code when you take your first coding course in CIT. So it's not as if that if you have never had that opportunity, you're starting out behind. That said, if you have learned to code, you are starting out ahead, right? Um, you would have a little more knowledge than some of your peers, but you you aren't behind. The expectation is that you're right where you should be. Our first coding class is in Python. Uh, Python has several uh, advantages. There's a few things about it that give me hives, but that's that's okay. As someone who learned to write code in uh, Pascal and C, it's just a little weird, but that's okay. As Paul points out, the key thing is how do you 
use the tools and solve problems. When you think about that first programming course, you're really learning about variables, about logic structures, about uh, loops, logical operators, if then else, how to put these things together to reach solutions. You can do those things in any language and you're going to have the opportunity to do more than one language. Everyone will take at least two coding courses and they will be in two different languages. So throughout your time here, you will have a course where you learn to take what you know from one environment and translate it into something new. As Paul very, very accurately mentioned, you're gonna to touch different languages over time, right? So that first language shift you'll do in class. And so you'll learn how to do that. Once you've done that, you'll do many more. Uh, the one thing that's important to realize whenever you decide you're going to go into any computing discipline and certainly into IT is that you're signing up for a lifetime of learning. You know, uh, there are people who do all sorts of things. The stuff I teach right now didn't exist when I joined the faculty. It's not that I didn't know it, it didn't exist. Um, it's very common for people to be doing all sorts of stuff they never took a class on. Uh, that smartphone in your pocket that there are hundreds of thousands of people making a living writing code for didn't exist before 2008. That's not that long ago. So one of the key things you're going to get out of our curriculum is you're not only going to learn these things, but you're going to learn how to learn and you're going to learn how to take the knowledge you have and apply it to new things that we don't even know what they are when they come down the pike so that you're going to have a very long and successful career. Thanks, Phil. Let's go to the students. We're, we're talking about all these courses and all these things. Let's hear from them and, and so that they can share their experiences. So um, is there, uh, let's talk about some of the projects and maybe some of the labs that you have done. Is there one that maybe comes to mind as a favorite or that can relate to some of the things that Phil and, and everyone else has talked about? Um, so Phoenix, let's start with you. Sure. Um, so one of the more interesting labs that I've seen um, in my three years here so far are the network engineering ones. Um, you know, if you visit our building, you know, we have an entire room, you know, filled to the brim with, you know, enterprise networking devices um, that we end up using in the lab. Um, so like Dr. Rawls mentioned, you know, we start off kind of, you know, pretty basic, you know, the first ass assignment in that lab, you know, you might have three or so devices. Um, that you need to physically connect, you know, and configure the, the settings for. Um, and then periodically, you know, you will complete that lab assignment and move on to the next one, um, you know, kind of backtracking over some different things that you've already learned and adding on. Um, so now I'm in another network engineering class um, and, you know, I have a good, you know, 10 devices or so at my disposal to manage. Um, I know that at the end of this course, uh, the final project for the entire lab section is to connect all of those networks together. Uh, so that ends up being, you know, 50, 60 or so devices um, all talking to each other. Um, so this is a really great example of, you know, getting that hands-on experience, right? So, of course, you know, we're learning about a lot of the different concepts, you know, and examples in our lecture. Um, but really, you know, where you start to see it work yourself and try to comprehend what it is exactly is going on is in that lab. Thanks, Phoenix. Evan, same question for you. What was one of your favorite projects in a class or lab and why was it memorable? Yeah, um, I think all of our labs are super interesting. Even from my first year on campus, the first cybersecurity lab I took, we signed an ethics contract and then we essentially uh, tried to break everything. Um, and so uh, you get that throughout, but really the most recent uh, project that I think is my favorite uh, happened in our cloud computing infrastructure class. Um, so if you know anything about the cloud nowadays, it's always just someone else's server. Um, so Amazon, Microsoft, and Google are really the, the top three in that market. But instead of learning how to utilize their cloud, we learned how to build our own. And so we came into the lab and had to physically build a few machines um, using hard drives, RAM, motherboards. Um, and then throughout the semester, we added more on top of it. And so in some labs, we were... Um, installing operating systems and configuring them automatically uh, with the USB stick. And so having those, you know, bundles of USB sticks, uh, like they mentioned earlier, is, is helpful. And then by the end of the class, we are running a cluster of multiple physical machines supporting a virtual environment. And so it's really where I saw all of my classes I had taken so far coming together. We had to write software uh, that supported back-end and front-end applications. 
uh, we had to not only configure a physical network, but then also virtual network components. And so uh, that kind of makes your head spin when you're talking about, are you talking about a virtual network on the physical hardware or a virtual network on the virtual hardware? Um, but it was really kind of all of the different components I had learned throughout my previous three years now culminating into this project where um, I can support essentially many different workflows in a computing environment. Thanks, Evan. Okay, Kat, which, which of your favorite projects or classes comes to mind? You know, Miss Tony, there are a bunch of projects that do come to my head. I There are literally so many um, ideas that each class lets you do. You can explore different avenues and different types of businesses. One that comes to mind is um, one I took about a year ago, and it was about system analysis and design methods. Um, and essentially, we had to basically almost build a um, an interface and a business architecture from the ground up. And so, obviously, you know, we had a little bit more of the technical side of that, right? Developing um, a website for that, we had to um, develop. Uh, use APIs um, in order to make it more tailored towards the business, as well as, you know, um, articulating the business structure, seeing how um, seeing how uh, the company will be transacting data, how we be how we will be, excuse me, interacting with our customers and everything. So honestly, I really appreciated it because um, I really appreciate it because I got to go see not only the business side, but also the technical side, which is really tapping into my major. Um, and also it allowed me to collaborate with people that I didn't know. Because a lot of the courses that you take in the CIT department, um, you're getting to meet a lot of different people. You're gonna be interacting with uh, people of different backgrounds. So it really like lets you connect with people um, and really develop a unique and beautiful product um, in any sort of class that you have. Thank you. Okay, Melody, let's talk with you. Uh, since the students are, have all uh, shared some of their classes, what is the plan of study like for the, the five majors with our CIT department? Are, are, are courses similar during the first year? Are they different in, in subsequent years? How, how soon do students get involved in hands-on learning? Those types of things. So our students are involved in hands-on learning from the moment they step into our classrooms. Whether it's a CNIT course or whether it's Tech 120, they're immediately going to be involved in working with others and using the techniques and tools that they're learning in their classes. Um, the plans of study for each of the majors are designed for you to take roughly 15 credits per semester and to finish in eight years. Now, some of our plans eight of study- Eight semesters. Eight semesters, yeah, sorry, not okay. years. <laughs> um, semesters. So we we do our best to try and get you in and out within the four year time frame. However, many of our students come in with additional credits uh, that they have earned prior to coming to the university, and that in some instances can help them graduate up to a semester early, depending on their major and depending on what those credits are. So that's something that you'll work with your academic advisor with to determine what credits you have and where they can fulfill requirements in your plan. But in general, um, all of our majors take a very similar first year for courses. And then in the second year, uh, some of the majors begin to diverge from that and focus on more major specific curriculum. So if you come in, say, as a CIT general student, and you look around at some of the things that are coming up for uh, data or cybersecurity or networking or systems analysis and design, you can fairly easily make that switch in your first year from the general major or the general track to one of those more specific or more defined majors. So that's all things I encourage you to talk with your academic advisor about. Um, the sooner we know, the sooner we can start looking at, you know, when is a good time to do that? What opportunities are there to um, keep you on track or make sure you're not losing any time if you make that decision? Uh, my philosophy in advising is all of your academic decisions are your own, but it's my job to give you the data. And again, here we go with data. Data drives everything 
to give you all the data that you need to make good decisions. So um, we are intimately involved with you in planning out your curriculum, and we are more than happy to talk anything through with you whenever you would want to discuss it. Thank you, Melody. So let's talk about senior capstone projects. Are, are there requirements and, and does your department have uh, those incorporated in the plan of study? I, I don't know, Phil or any of the uh, faculty can answer that one. I'll take a, I'll take a run at that one. Okay. We have, we don't have the industry sponsored capstone projects the way some of our colleagues in engineering technology do. And um, the main reason for that is, if, as you can imagine, when we're teaching computing infrastructure, network infrastructure, cybersecurity, uh, we, we can't exactly um, have students in those systems in real life situations, and we can't exactly duplicate GM's computing system on campus for students to do that kind of thing. So instead, we have an overall capstone experience that Paul teaches that he can speak to in, in more detail on project management. Everything in IT is a project, no matter what it is. And so being able to understand that, how do I manage projects? How do I look at critical paths? What are my scarce resources? Uh, as well as how do I put together that sales pitch to get those funded are really important skills there. Then each of our specific majors, so this would be everything except that general CIT, has its own major specific capstone where all of the pieces come together. So in the infrastructure and networking piece, that's the network security course because you bring all those parts together there. In cybersecurity, we fill that role with the penetration testing course. We have a uh, data analysis final capstone course, 484, brand new for that new major that brings that together. And then 380 serves that role in the uh, computing system analysis and design major. So we have all of those things uh, available there. T to highlight on something Melody was just talking about, we also have options that you can double major between our specific majors. You can't double major with general because technically any of the specific ones is a double major with general because we've just replaced some of the flexibility there with specific courses. Um, and one of the most common double majors is between cybersecurity and computing and infrastructure and network engineering. And I believe Evan is doing that if I, uh, no, not Evan, was it Phoenix who was doing? Someone at their, intro mentioned they were doing that. I have not had the chance to have Phoenix in class yet. Uh, and so they can see a little bit more about that particular item. But we see other things that might fit well in that with what could be happening with um, data as well as systems analysis and design. There might be good fits there for students who wish to do so. Okay, thank you, Phil. So um, we're getting several questions about internships uh, from local companies and, and larger out-of-state companies. So Don, is there a professional work or internship experience requirement for students in, in CIT majors? How do students look for internships and jobs after graduation or, you know, before? Uh, and I know you play a big, uh, a big role in, in running our Purdue's Computing Career Fair. So can you talk a little bit about that? Thanks. Uh, I can't hear you, Don. No. Says I'm unmuted. Okay, there, I heard you a little bit. You're low. No, technology, you have to start it and stop it. <laughs> <laughs> and you might want to talk a little bit louder because it's oh. you're coming in kind of low. Oh, okay. All right. Well, okay. Is that is that any better? Yes. Okay. All right. I I can put on the instructor voice if I need to. <laughs> um, Phil, help me out real quick. How many hours in the professional experience, professional IT experience? Two hundred and forty. Two hundred and forty. Okay. So, um, as part of your requirement for graduation, 
we want every student to have some sort of IT professional experience. And that could be an internship. Um, maybe you work on campus in the uh, Purdue IT department. Um, you, you could have, uh, we have some students that work part-time remotely during the school year um, with the company that maybe they interned with, or maybe they've just been able to set something up where they work 10, 15 hours uh, remotely uh, during the school year. Uh, th there's a whole list. Um, there's some courses you can take um, and uh, you would work with your advisor uh, to discuss these options. But if you decide, okay, I would like to get an internship, each fall semester, uh, we host with a student org on campus, the Computing Career Fair. And uh, last fall, we had over 85 companies. Uh, over a two day period, we had over 1100 students um, stop by to talk to the recruiters. Um, I am uh, contacted almost weekly from recruiters with open positions that they'd like us to post uh, to the, the uh, student body. Um, we're in the process of hiring an industry engagement staff person who would make this their full-time job uh, to interact with possible recruiters. Um, and if, if even, oh, and then there's also at Purdue, there's the Center for Career Opportunities, CCO. They'll help you with your resume. Uh, they'll help you with mock interviews. Um, we're, we are here to help uh, for you to find an internship um, and a career, uh, because obviously that's the goal <laughs> once you get your degree. Um, and uh, I'm, I have been known uh, more than once uh, to sit down with students and uh, we just start going through the job listings um, and uh, we work on resumes and, and interviews one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. So uh, there is a lot of support to make sure that that professional IT experience is fulfilled and you are ready for the workforce when you graduate. Thank you, Don. Yeah, and I know a lot of the students that like some of our ambassadors and some of the, they're going everywhere. They're going to your, your banks, your insurance companies, your Apple and Microsoft, and uh, they're going to your, you know, security companies, FBI, CIA, they're going to uh, manufacturing, they're going everywhere. When I students share with me, they're, oh, I've got a job with this or I got an internship with this company. It's just amazing to me, all the different places that they're going. So um, Paul and, and Romulo, what additional examples of real world experiences can you tell us about for students in any of the, the majors? I can, I can go first. So uh, playing off what Don was talking about with the career fairs, um, a lot of what we do in our programs are, I'm going to say, influenced by feedback we get from our industry partners who, uh, like clockwork, every career fair, they are there to take our current students and upcoming graduates for either internship positions or full-time openings. And the intern to full-time pathway is very prevalent with these companies. So our most recent career fair, uh, I was there talking to a couple of our alums, uh, uh, people who were students before, and that they are back recruiting. And in addition to this, uh, this happens in a number of our classes. I can only personally speak to mine, where we have guest speakers from our industry partners come in and give a, a lecture on one of the to pertinent topics related to the course. So for me, uh, in my course, it's called or System and Organizational Security. Uh, we had someone come in from Humana and talk about what cybersecurity looks like at Humana. And that's great insights for the students as well in terms of how the, the concepts we talk about in class, the things they work on in labs, how it translates into real world applications. This is what people do in their day to day. Thank you. Okay, well, let's talk to the students about some of these things. Um, let's talk about maybe uh, 
you know, your resumes or if you've had internships or where you're planning to go if you're a senior, um, share share what, what's been happening and when it comes to the real world experience. And Kat, let's start with you. Yeah, absolutely. So I um, currently am still doing an internship at the company called Duck Creek Technologies. And essentially my role there is I'm a support engineer. So I'm helping both on the technical side, but also the project management side um, with some of the ins and outs of the company and also just um, handling uh, with data management. Um, and I'm currently going to pursue a, um, a summer internship in New York City with Accenture. And I'm very excited. It's a consulting internship and just general experiences overall. Um, Purdue helped me throughout the whole process. Polytechnic professors, like they always offered help and whatnot for resume work or just interviews and whatnot. Even connections, the smallest connections really helped me get my foot in the door to really talk to people and get practice, you know, of how to actually talk during interviews. And in addition to that, right, um, there are a bunch of different opportunities that um, uh, that the professors have just been like offering in like research and whatnot, and that also helped me prep for further interviews and also just, you know, expand on my experience for my internships and whatnot. Um, and in general as well, oh my goodness, there's, I just keep thinking of back to my original resume back when I was a freshman. It, it I, may I say, it was definitely needed some work there. And I'm really, I'm really happy and glad that the Polytechnic was there to help me out and really make it like pretty and really make it like, actually more personable as well, which is another big thing that I've noticed a lot with the Polytechnic ambassadors and also Polytechnic advisors as well have been helping me do. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna let okay. somebody Thank else you. speak about it. Yeah, thanks Kat. Okay, Evan, how about you? Yeah, sim similar to Kat's story, my high school resume, I came to Purdue, I was so proud of it. You know, it got me into Purdue University. It has to be pretty good. And then uh, my first semester on campus, I went to the Center for Career Opportunities, which is our career readiness center. Um, they were doing a resume workshop and they handed it back to me with so much red ink on it. I thought surely their pen had broken. Um, so I quickly scheduled a one on one appointment and uh, they helped me rewrite it. They did some mock interviews and it has been very successful so far. I've actually had internships after every year here at Purdue. Um, the first two were with Amazon as a software engineer. Um, however, I really focused a lot on the solutions architecture side. Um, and so more taking the systems analysis and design skills I have learned from my classes and designing the project and then actually coding and implementing it. So that was really fun. And then this past summer, I was with AT&T in Dallas, Texas as a technology development intern. Um, and so similar things there, I was applying the skills I had learned in my class. Um, that was all about cloud migration. And so systems analysis and design really came into play. A lot of software engineering and infrastructure as code came into play. Um, and then this past fall, since I'm a senior this year, I went to those career fairs again. And at the computing career fair was Comcast and NBC Universal. And so I have a minor in theater production. I've kind of had this um, passion for entertainment and really seeing where the technology field intersects there. So I talked with them, um, really hit it off with the recruiter. They invited me out for a final interview in Philadelphia. And, uh, and so I landed that full-time job offer even before my last semester here at Purdue. So I'll be with them as a software and network engineer in a rotational program. So I get to try out multiple jobs over the next couple of years uh, within their company. And so it's, I can't speak highly enough to the payoff of not only Purdue University, um, because we have career fairs and the helpful career events all the time, but specifically CNIT and the Polytechnic gives you those skills that every single company coming to campus wants, even if they're coming for like, I don't even know, nursing majors, a hospital needs IT people. And so you can go hit it off with that recruiter. Thanks, Evan. A great example. Phoenix, how about you? Sure. Um, so I've been pretty lucky with my work experience. Um, even before coming to Purdue, I had um, you know some experience under my belt. Uh, so I worked as a software engineer intern for the defense contractor North of Grumman. Um, but the last several years, I've been working for the cybersecurity company CrowdStrike, 
um, in a variety of different roles. So if you're not familiar, CrowdStrike uh, provides sort of an advanced antivirus at the enterprise level, um, but also some cybersecurity consulting services. Um, so after my freshman year, I did some work in malware reverse engineering. Uh, this past year, I did some work in digital forensics incident response consulting. And I'm actually returning to CrowdStrike for my third summer with them, doing some proactive security consulting. Um, yeah, so it's a lot, a lot, a lot of good stuff to look forward to, um, and definitely a really big part of you know my ability to talk my way through interviews and you know explain my skills are um, you know the projects and labs that we've worked on. Again, you know the labs are really, really helpful in being able to talk to recruiters um, about the things that I'm not only like the technologies that I'm working with, but also the problem solving skills and teamwork strategies that I'm using um, to get all those things done well. Um, so. Uh, it's 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 been going pretty well, um, and I'm definitely glad to be in this program. Thank you, Phoenix. Amazing. I, I'm just amazed as I hear uh, the three students and all the things that you guys are saying. So I have a question from the audience. Are these internships counted as credits towards graduation? Melody, can you take that one? We do not give credit for internship experiences. However, Inter an internship is a required co-curricular and it it is part of your degree requirements, but it does not bear credit. Okay, thank you. Um, Melody, also while I have you here, I mean, while you're talking, would you please uh, tell us a little other ways students can take advantage of opportunities at Purdue that complement their majors, you know, certificates, uh, degree plus, is there any other things that students can do? Sure. Um, many of our students uh, will uh, add on the entrepreneurship certificate. This helps position them to move into the makerspace where they will create their own products and then market them and bring them to life um, or collaborate with others in that space as well. So I do recommend the entrepreneurship certificate to a lot of my students. We also have, um, we partner for science uh, and the College of Science for the um, the data certificate program. If you don't want to do the full data major with us, but you want to get some additional experience in that data space, do that certificate. Um, one really unique opportunity that I think our students have is to earn both a BA and a BS if they do degree plus with liberal arts. Liberal arts offers a slew of different majors. So if you're somebody who um, is interested, really interested in another field as well, um, and I'll, Evan will probably understand this, but um, film and video production. I have a student that was doing a degree plus with liberal arts in um, video and film production as well as um, cybersecurity. So uh, he wanted to be able to uh, chase his passion in the film and video space, but then also be able to utilize his uh, IT skills to keep a roof over his head. So um, he was uh, coupling those two things together. I have many students who choose to uh, minor in things that are art related. Um, they have an artistic bent or they might be interested in game design, so they they will um, pick up some additional coursework in game design uh, to use alongside their CIT major. So there's a lot of options and opportunities at Purdue to, as Phil likes to say, scratch whatever itch you have as far as uh, computing and then another field. field. So um, I like to talk to my students, ask them, where do you see yourself when you leave here? And then listen very closely to what we tell what they tell me so that together we can put together the, the roadmap to get them there. Thank you, Melody. May I add something to that, please? Yeah, sure. So uh, given that we are uh, a major R1 university, it would be remiss of us not to mention undergraduate research opportunities. Um, yes. That is for especially for those among you looking at grad school down the line already, undergraduate research is a great way to get your feet wet with uh, the entire research process going from experiment design to data collection, different analysis methods, and um, 
so some of the professors in my in our department uh, from time to time offer these undergraduate research opportunities and um, my experiences working with undergrads in this regard has been great we get them uh, familiar with a lot of advanced statistical uh, analysis techniques which you probably won't even cover in some of the courses that you take because that's how you have to analyze the data at hand um, and that is something uh, beyond just being a line item you can put in your resume that is a transferable skill you can take with you to wherever you go be it workplace or uh, grad school as i mentioned down the line Thank you. That was a, a perfect, uh, yeah, another great example. And there are so many things that our students can do. And um, we're out of time, and I, I, I want to give everybody the opportunity, but is there anything else that you may want to share about life after graduation for our students? Some of the professors, anything that our students have done or anything that, um, you know, that our degrees have really taken them to special places or... Um, any specific examples of future jobs that, that you think our viewers may be interested in that you want to share? And and I'm Ramila or Don or Phil, since Phil or Paul, if you want to, you have another example. Um, uh, nothing specifically, but I can state uh, with a great degree of confidence that uh, we have alums and graduates in your major uh, software giants, your Amazon, Apple, Google, Microsoft, all of them. Um, we have people working in the Department of Defense, uh, defense contractors, um, and their job titles range from business analysts, data analysts, cybersecurity analysts, consultants, project managers. It's almost every conceivable job title you can think of. We more than likely have an alum or a graduate working in that role in one of these company, one of these types of companies. Um, and that doesn't happen by happenstance or coincidence. And the fact that a number of these companies come back and recruit again tells its own story. Wonderful. Thank you. So before we finish our conversation tonight, we always like to ask everyone, what advice do you have for future students in any of the, the five uh, CIT majors to be successful, to be happy? So please uh, feel free to, to touch on anything that comes to mind, like you know, getting ready for college or how to be a good student, meeting people, building a community, or just enjoying life at Purdue. Um, Let's see, Melody, why don't you go first and then uh, Romila, you're you're going to be next, okay? <laughs> and we'll go down I the think line. The num yeah, the number one thing I share with my incoming students is you have to manage your time. You have to be a good steward of your time. Um, more than any other time in your life, you're not going to have anybody directing right now how your time is spent so it's important that you take ownership of that time and spend it productively and that learning happens more than just in the classroom wonderful thank you romila yes can you hear me yes yes, yes so my number one uh, my only mantra uh, has been as i was a grad student and i was an undergrad student and then i become a professor is to just show up and uh, show, by showing up, I mean show up to classes, show up to every opportunity opportunity that, that comes your way. For example, if there is an internship call and you think, oh, I'm not a good fit for this, if you don't apply, you have forfeited that chance. So showing up to everything that you can is uh, probably the best advice that, that I can give you. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Paul, you're next. Um, I'm going to play off what Romola said, and it's show up and be willing to learn even if it's something you're not necessarily comfortable with or it's not something you see an immediate application for because we have set things up so that it will benefit you some somewhere someday even if it's not right now wonderful thank you phil i think the piece of advice i would give people is never shortchange what you know I teach a capstone course and students will get into the situation of like, well, I don't know how to do that. And it's like, yes, you do. It's like, no, I don't. It's like, I've never done this before. It's like, well, what have you done like it? 
analogize what you know to other things. You, you know how to solve problems. You know how to, do, if you just stop, think, break the problem down, you're capable of doing almost anything. Don't sell yourself short. Wonderful, thank you. And then Don, the last advice from a professor. Okay, can you hear me okay? Yes. All right, excellent. All right, the one thing that I tell students as they come in, there are a lot of clubs and a lot of organizations on campus. Us as faculty, we need you to find something on campus. Maybe it's a part-time job. Maybe it's a club. Uh, maybe it's an intramural sport, something that has nothing to do with computers <laughs> because you need to recharge your brain. Go do something fun with non-computer students and then recharge and come back to class. Um, you're a lot more engaged. You're a lot more relaxed. Um, and uh, <laughs> you're a lot more fun. <laughs> oh, wonderful, Don. I, I think you must have just read the last question that was uh, brought by the, the audience about student orgs. So I'm going to turn this one out to the students. Um, Current students, talk about your student organizations and maybe any advice that you may have. You know, how have you been involved per what Don just mentioned? Uh, Evan, let's go first with you. Yeah, um, so I would totally agree that uh, there is so much to do, so many student organizations, so many ways to get involved on campus. And honestly, some of the core memories I've built at Purdue have not been in lecture, believe it or not. They've been in those organizations with other students um, who are fellow Boilermakers. So one example of those organizations that I'm involved in is Purdue University Dance Marathon. We raise money all year for Riley Hospital for Children. And at the end of the year, we throw an 18 hour essentially dance party where we invite the families who are being treated at the hospital to come celebrate our efforts with us and talk about a fulfilling experience um, those relationships and those friendships I've built there um, will last a lifetime. And so those are just a glimpse into it. I've also been involved in orientation programs and that's essentially like summer camp for college kids. And so there's never a boring day on campus. And so something about attending such a large university is there is so many opportunities. There's never a boring day. You're not going to outgrow Purdue. And so get involved, find those interests. Maybe it's something that you've never tried before, like climbing a rock wall. Well, our rec center has one of those, give it a shot. Um, and so if you need a starting point, maybe choose something related to your major that you are gonna develop your career in and then something completely out of the blue, maybe a sport you did in high school, uh, an interest you have this itch we wanna scratch. Um, and I think you'll be very successful here on campus. Wonderful, thank you, great advice. How about you, Kat? You can go next. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of touching on basically what everybody's saying, engage with people outside of the college. It's really important because you're going to be not only making those connections in life, but just, you know, your corest and most deepest, beautiful memories that you're going to get from Purdue are from mostly those people. And on top of that, right, these, frankly, I'm realizing this, unfortunately, a little bit late. These are the best times of your days, not just because of like what you're actually learning and whatnot, but the problems that you're going to be facing. These are the easiest problems as of right now that you're going to be facing until you get into real life. So really be grateful that you're actually in a place where you can struggle with people, that you have this network, that you could literally go to your next door neighbor and be like, hey, I'm working on this problem. I've been staying up until 2 a.m. Can you help me? And we could finish this at 3 a.m. Enjoy those moments of just your absolute lows because I realized that's how I made my deepest connections and deepest, 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 deepest memories. And I'm grateful that you guys could actually experience this not only at Purdue, but just in the Polytechnic. Thank you, Kat. All right. The last word goes to Phoenix. Uh, you shouldn't have. Um, just like how everyone else is saying, you know, you do want to live a little bit, right? You know, all of us here are committed to computing. You know, it's a big part of our lives, but it's not everything. Um, it's good to make friends outside our department. Trust me, you'll make plenty of friends in lab already. Um, I've, I have, you know, many, many people that I've been struggling with labs on. You know, we get to know each other a little bit better. 
Um, personally, I'm pretty involved in a lot of the Asian American organizations on campus. Um, but even beyond campus, you know, I've expanded my network, you know, at the university level and at the Midwestern level. So that's been really awesome. Um, there's plenty of options for you to do. You, know, you don't have to feel limited by you know, our major either. You know, I've worked as a reporter for the newspaper. Um, I've participated in club swim. So there's there's going to be something here for you, you know, no matter what it is you're interested in. Um, you know, Pree's got it. Thank you, Phoenix. Okay, everyone, thank you. Thank you um, for, for being with us this, this evening. This concludes our discussion tonight. Uh, thanks again for all of you for watching and for submitting questions. And we hope you learn something new about our, our majors within the Department of Computer and Information Technology. Thank you for um, definitely all our panelists for joining us and sharing your wisdom and your experience and if you joined us late be sure to watch the replay uh, because we covered a variety of different topics throughout the hour thanks as well to jessica Yahoya for answering questions in the chat room and for john our technical director for all the behind the scenes work as i mentioned before please feel free to send an email to tech recruit at purdue.edu if you have any additional questions for us about the CIT or about Purdue. Uh, we hope you will join us for one of our more upcoming events uh, for admitted students, um, including Purdue's For Me's, um, which is an opportunity to visit campus uh, with your family. We have admitted student days. There are also many online information sessions and student to student chats. You can find information for all those opportunities on our admitted student information page. You might enjoy seeing one or more of our other YouTube broadcasts as well. And coming up uh, April 12th, watch our live Q&A about student life at Purdue for all students admitted to the Polytechnic majors. Replay of re recent uh, broadcasts focusing on women in technology, diversity in the Polytechnic are also available. All the broadcasts are listed online. Just a quick reminder, the deadline to accept your offer to Purdue is May 1st. And um, thanks again for being here tonight. Have a great evening and boiler up. Take care. <laughs>